I'm super stoked about this video. In the last week, I have been field testing three of the most popular plant ID apps. And all of these apps are free to download. They just need a smartphone camera and internet access to work. And you can also use photos already on your phone if you don't have internet access when you're encountering the plant you wanna ID. So I'm gonna be sharing which were my favorites and why. Each one of these apps brings something specific to the table. I did have a clear favorite, but I'm not gonna spoil that just yet. In my week of testing these apps in various environments, I quickly realized that user interface was just as important to me as accuracy, and I also discovered that gamification was more important than I thought it would be to me. Coming in last place is PlantNet. PlantNet is a French app that uses crowdsourced image database and an image recognition technology to make IDs. All right, I think I'm getting the hang of this user interface. They want, they want you to tell it what part of the plant you've taken a photo of. The user interface of this app honestly made it clunky and annoying to use in the field. When I'm out in the field, I don't want to have to babysit an app. I don't have to be looking at my phone and entering in things. Um, it does offer alternate IDs, which was one of the positives and things that I liked about it, but those were often incorrect and so also kind of not helpful. Um, not always accurate. I guess that this plant could be useful to look at some of the lookalikes of the plant at least. All right, so for the top two apps, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them. The second place is the German app Flora Incognita. Um, this app uses 100% curated photos, so not crowdsourced, um, from like botanists and scientists, etc., which is different than the other two. Um, which theoretically makes it more accurate, which I did find the accuracy of this app to be fairly high. Um, it does specialize in wild plants of Europe and North America. So if you try to use it outside of that range, it's not gonna do very well. And if you're using it on like garden plants that are non-native, it might also struggle with that. Pearly Everlasting and Aphilus Margaritacea. Nice job, Flora Incognito, love that. And it says 97% accuracy which it is correct, so that seems good. One thing I did really like about this app is that it includes a write-up on the species that you've identified that gives some information about the plant. And something that I like about that is that when you read it, sometimes you can be like, oh, this definitely isn't the plant, but you can also just learn about the plant that you've identified. Another thing that this app had that the number one app, which we'll reveal in a second, um, didn't, doesn't have is that it has an accuracy percentage. And I honestly don't know how I feel about this function. Some of the things that I identified had like a 23% accuracy. Some of them had 75%. Some of them have like 98%. And I guess that's helpful. It's basically like how much to trust it. I don't like that the app always guesses what species it is. So maybe it's a 23% accuracy, but it guesses the species and it's wrong. This app will ask you to take more pictures if it doesn't get it from the first picture. And it will tell you what part of the plant it wants specifically. So sometimes it wants you to take a picture of the leaf or the flower. So it can be a little confusing on the user interface, but it's nice that it asks for more information when it needs it. All right, number one favorite app was Seek by iNaturalist. This is a North American app which means that if you are in North America, it's going to be a little bit more accurate, but iNaturalist has an image database that covers the entire world. Um, check it out on this map. There's observations literally from every continent. Um, the white parts of the map are gonna be places that have less observations. So if you're in that place, it might be slightly less accurate. Um, one great thing about this app is that because it has such a huge image database and these images are actually typically verified by the community rather than just being like some random Joe saying this is this is what plant they think it is. Um, it does involve more accuracy and a larger database than the other two, which I think is great. And you can also contribute it to the database as well. Wow, okay. One of the things that I love about iNaturalist, come check it out, is it actually says like as I approached this plant, it already knew that it was some kind of vicinium, like huckleberry or cranberry, which is really cool. And already, again, without me having to take a picture, instantaneously with the same amount of reception as, as either the other two, it knows it's thinly huckleberry. And let's actually test it a little bit. I'm gonna pan over to the mountain ash. Let's see how quickly it picks up on that. Wow, Rowan's a mountain ash, is Sitka mountain ash? Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's actually so amazing because there's not any flowers or fruit, there's only leaves. 
and the leaves among the mountain ashes look really similar. Something I love about this app is that it does not guess a species unless it is sure. And it will give you a genus or a family if it doesn't know the exact species. And you can take more pictures and try to get it more narrow. It gives you an option for that. But I would much rather have a partial correct ID than a full incorrect ID, personally. I can use other tools to narrow the ID down from there, which I'll talk about in another video. All right, and you may have mixed feelings about this, but this app is extremely effectively gamified, which means it is like a game. It's kind of like a real life version of Pokemon. I didn't expect that I would like it as much as I did, but it's amazing. It gives you badges when you identify a certain number of species and even like different types of organisms like insects and plants. Um, I think this could be really fun for like teen, preteen, kind of 10, nine year old children who are like really enjoying learning about nature. They could like collect all the different species, maybe better use of their time than Pokemon. And um, I definitely found myself like wanting to literally run around and identify more species with this app. I was quite surprised. <laughs> After this week of testing, I have to say that I am so excited to bring the Seek app with me on vacations and hikes because it just makes it so much more fun and interactive and it allows me to know plants in the moment that I don't know yet. I don't come across a lot of plants that I don't know where I live, but when I visit other places, there's a lot of them and I always wish I knew what they were and now I can. So I'm super stoked about this and I really recommend downloading this plant app today and bringing it on your next hike or even just walk in your neighborhood. One other thing that I wanna say that all of these apps do, which I thought was really cool, is that it saves your observations so you can actually go back and look at all the plants that you've identified. So if you wanted to try to remind yourself, whoa, what was that plant that I saw yesterday? Again, that kind of violet thing I saw, you can go back and it has saved it along with the picture and the description. So it's pretty good for learning in that way. As far as these three apps go, I'm going to be keeping the Seek app and the Flora Incognita app, and I'm going to use them. Probably mostly I'll use the Seek app and then I'll hit the Flora Incognita app if I want a little bit of a cross-reference thing going on, which can be helpful. They're two different image databases, so you might as well, right? Okay, but it's not all about the app, right? We can't just take a dark, blurry photo of a lumpy, stepped upon plant and expect these apps to magically identify it, right? We need to give them something good to work with. So let's talk about some things that you can do to help your app get a more correct ID. Okay, first, take pictures of the plant straight on so that the leaf shape is obvious in the frame of the camera. It may help to hold the leaf flat or turn it toward the camera with your other hand that's not holding the phone. This, these apps really like it when you include the flowers in particular because the flowers are actually how plants are categorized mostly and usually how they're um, discern, like how to tell them apart. Third, make sure you have adequate lighting and that the photo is pretty focused. Um, smartphones can really struggle to focus on plants, especially if the wind is blowing it and it's this skinny little thing, it's gonna focus on the background. So something you can do is actually put your hand behind the plant so that the camera has something to, bigger to focus on than the plant, and that should help keep it in focus. All right, fourth, it is really important to keep in mind that these apps struggle with really young plants, like something that's literally just sprouted out of the ground, and really old dying plants that are like brown and maybe are just have some like seeds and like an eaten leaf or whatever. The best time to ID a plant is when it's in full flower. So in my area, the best time to go out for this is from like April to June, is when most plants are flowering and that's when you're gonna get, gonna get the best IDs. Finally, it's really important to remember that these plant ID apps need cell service, which might be a challenge on longer hikes and when you're out in remote areas. And they also take a lot of battery life. So you might even bring like an extra, one of those charging stations for your phone if you're wanting to use this for a many hour hike. When I was designing this video and testing the apps, um, a lot of my friends asked me, oh, are you going to test Google Lens? I did not test Google Lens, and that is because Google Lens is not primarily designed as a plant ID app, and its accuracy is fairly low. My friend actually did test it out a little bit when I was testing my apps, and I was really not impressed with the level of accuracy. If you look at Google images of plants, a lot of them are misidentified. There's no community verification system for these plants, 
like with Seek or Flora Incognita where they're just coming from scientists. It's like the wild west out there on Google. So this app is definitely not super accurate and I do not recommend using it for plant ID. Thank you so much for watching the video. I would love to hear in the comments which apps are your favorite why and do you have any other apps that you like to use than the one that i talked about in this video if you enjoyed this video feel free to like and subscribe and support my channel i come out with videos every wednesday i have a book about foraging medicinal plants in the pacific northwest it just came out in april 2024 and it has 35 things that you can harvest that are super common in the pacific northwest it also has recipes with pictures and how to harvest that's my friend here is the page on gumweed or grindelia. And I like to include things like how the seeds are shaped and how the leaves are shaped and how the basil leaves are shaped um, so that you can identify the plants more easily in the field. So if this looks really cool to you, you can check it out. It's for sale on Amazon and from my publisher, Mountaineers.